Now we want to spend some time talking about a pretty complicated example for Hess's law. So this is the problem. There's annotated slides in the PDF if you want to kind of follow along with those, but I'm not going to narrate it right here. We're just going to go into me working it out where I kind of talk overall through this whole problem and give some context on it and see how it goes. All right, so let's do an example where we're going to put all of this Hess's Law ideas together. Um, get about as complicated as you can. You'll be preparing SOCl2 using the following reaction. SO3 gas plus Cl2 gas becomes SOCl2 plus SO2 gas. Before running the reaction, you want to know delta H. You cannot find a value for this reaction, but you are able to find delta H for some related reactions. All right, so this is a real life why we use Hess's Law in the chemistry lab. You're going to do this reaction. You want to make SOCl2. And you're going to run this reaction. You're going to react SO3 and SCl2. And you're going to make this as your product. You know, have another desired product. You have another product there as well. Okay. And so you want to know delta H. And the reason why you want to know delta H is that is your enthalpy, right? That is going to correspond to let you know is this reaction going to get hot? Is this reaction going to get cold? Is this thing exothermic, endothermic? Those are going to be some safety considerations that you need to know when you're running this reaction. Should you, is it going to get really hot? Should you run it on ice? Is it going to get really cold? Should you maybe heat it up to keep the reaction moving? Um, can you put it in water or is it going to freeze that water, right? What sort of things do you also need to be concerned with, you know, around those ideas? What, that's kind of part of, you know, doing safe chemistry is knowing not only what you're going to make, but what the energy associated with that is. So this is a big part of being careful, not just kind of haphazardly running chemical reactions. So there's no delta H for this. You can't look it up, but you find these other reference reactions. You'll note they're both combustion reactions. It's very common to be able to find um, delta H for combustion reactions. These are tabulated um, in large numbers. Um, and so SO2 plus O2 gives you SO3, and SCl plus O2 gives you SOCl2. And so they each have an associated delta H going across. We want to know the delta H for this reaction. And so we have two reference reactions. So the previous examples, we've kind of seen how we can add reactions together and how we can modify reactions to look like each other. And so we're going to put those ideas together in this process. So the first thing I want to do is there's a kind of a gut reaction when you see two reactions like this that you want to add them together. That's not what you want to do here. And what I'm, I'm going to do it to show you why it doesn't work. Um, so let's go ahead and write them out, our two input reactions. We can go through the process of how we learned how to add. Let's see what that looks like. SO2 gas plus O2 gas. I'm just writing out those references that I found. And you know, our kind of gut is, help. just add them together. We got these two. Plus O2 gas gives me 2SOCl2 gas. All right, I've just copied my reference. I'm going to add them together. And we know for adding together, draw an arrow. Um, all my reactants stay reactants. All my products stay products. SOCl2 gas. Um, so just move all those. I got the 2SO2 gas plus 2SCl2 gas. Plus, I'm going to combine those, 2O2 gas. Wonderful. So if I add those two reactions together, this is what I get. I don't care, though, because this is what we want. Right? This is the reaction we actually want. This reaction, you can figure out it's delta H. We know the delta H of this one is negative 198.2 kilojoules per mole. The delta H for this, this reference is 456.1 kilojoules per mole. So for this, your delta H for that total reaction is going to sum up. You just add those two together. It's going to be negative 198.2 kilojoules per mole plus negative 456.1 kilojoules per mole, which gives you a nice total of negative 654. So this is true. The enthalpy of this reaction is negative 654.3. And if that is what you wanted, you were interested in doing the reaction of SO2, SCl2, O2 to make SO3 and SOCl2, you now have the delta H. 
But importantly, that is not our target reaction. So we want to be careful. The kind of gut instinct that everyone has is when you see these two, just add them together. And we do need to add reactions together, just not these reactions. We need to think about how can I change these in order to into a form that when I add them together will give me what I want. So how we do that is we take a look at our reference reactions. We take a look at our target and we think again, you know, kind of when we were rearranging, when we were uh, you know, changing the coefficients, changing the order, how are they similar and how are they different? What I really want to key in on is, do I have anything that is, um, you know, only in one of the reference reactions. So for example, SO2. So I can see SO2 is only in this one reference reaction and it only shows up in this on the product side. And so what I can say then is well, what I want to do is this first reaction, when I add it together, get it into a state that it adds, SO2 needs to be a product and it needs to have a coefficient of one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify reaction one. There's a couple things I need to do. I need to switch the order or switch sides. And I need to change coefficients. And what I need is for them to be one half. So if I look, this reaction, which we'll call one, all that too. So for one, it was two SO2 gas plus O2 gas becomes two SO3 gas. And we know in that case that delta H of reaction one is negative 198.2 kilojoules per mole. But I want to switch sides and I want to multiply the coefficients by one half. So this, instead of 2SO3 as a product, becomes just SO3 gas as a reactant. My products now become, instead of 2SO2, just becomes SO2 gas plus one half O2 gas. And the delta H on this is going to be equal to negative one half times that delta H one that I had before. So negative one half times negative 198.2 kilojoules per mole is negative positive, sorry, 99.1 kilojoules per mole. All right, so we got reaction one set. Now we need to fix reaction two. And so if we key in on reaction two, I could say, look at like, for example, SCL2. And SCL2 is right here. And so this is a reactant. This is a reactant. So I don't need to change sides. The only thing I need to do is adjust my coefficients. So if I modify reaction two, I need to, the sides are fine, I just need to change coefficients. And what I need to do is I need to multiply by one half because my reference is a two, my target has a one, but they're on the correct sides. So that's good. So what I can do is I can take that, write it out. So reaction two is two SCL two gas plus O2 gas becomes two SO Cl2 gas. Oh, and I know delta H on that. And 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply all the coefficients by one half. So I get SCl2 gas plus one half O2 gas becomes SOCl2 gas. And delta H on this is just going to be one half, no negative this time, because I'm not changing, I didn't change the direction. Kilojoules per mole, which is equal to 228.1. Negative 228.1 kilojoules per mole. So I've got my modified reaction one, got my modified reaction two. I modified them to look like the cork so that the you know substances in those reactions were on the right side and have the correct coefficient as in my target reaction. And so now I combine them. And so that is what is SO3 gas becomes SO2 gas plus one half O2 gas, SCL2 gas plus one half O2 gas becomes SOCl2 gas. Delta H on this one was positive 99.1 kilojoules per mole and delta H on this one was, the one we just did, negative 228.1 and I'm going to add them together. So all of those reactants come together. SO3 gas plus SCl2 gas. Then I give myself enough space. All my reactants come together. And then all my products come together. After I combine, I want to simplify. I have O2, O2. Those need to be canceled because you know they're not changing. All I'm left with is then SO3 gas plus SCl2 gas becomes SO2 gas plus SO. CL2 gas. Which isn't really that exciting because that was what we were told was the reaction we wanted to do. So it's good we have gotten the right reaction. It's not too nuts that we, we got it. We, on purpose, uh, we're trying to accomplish that. So the thing we want to take from it then is what is the delta H? And it's going to come from adding these together. Because if these were the reference reactions, adding those together gives you this. So delta H for this reaction is the sum of those two values. So that tells me that delta H is equal to positive 991, 99.1 kilojoules per mole plus negative 228.1 kilojoules per mole which is equal to negative 129 kilojoules per mole. Oh, sorry, 128. Here, 129. 10. Ooh, 129. And so that's really valuable. We got information about this reaction without having to do any experiment. And it's a piece of information we would definitely want to know before running the reaction.
Okay, so it's an exothermic reaction, but that's not very exothermic. Negative 129 isn't too bad. If we had taken the result of just adding them together, we got negative 650. That's a very exothermic reaction. We'd probably be a lot more concerned about trying to keep this thing cold and make sure it doesn't get super hot. Um, we still need to be mindful. This thing will be getting warm, but it's probably not going to get scaldingly hot. We don't need to take too crazy of adjustments. But we can go through this process. We did not do any experiments here. We just looked up reference data and we learned something about this experiment that will be valuable. We learned something about a chemical reaction without having to do it. And that's really at the end, the goal of having of doing thermodynamics.